When you have a series of sheets in an Excel file and they have the same structure and you want to get a summary of all those sheets together, you can easily do that in Excel if you know a few tricks. Let, let's get started. Say these were, were or are going to be the sales in 2013 on Monday, January, then Monday, February, Tuesday, January, etc. To get the list from January down is very easy. You type it one time, January, go in the right lower corner of that cell and double click and it automatically adds the other months. For Monday I could do the same trick, but I cannot double click, for that would go downwards. I have to drag it to the right and it will automatically go into Friday until I stop. One more thing that you may want to know, if you want subtotals at the bottom and to the right, that can easily be done without creating formulas over and over again and copy them. Select all the numbers, click on B2, Control shift arrow down, Control shift arrow to the right. You want one extra row for the sum, shift arrow down one time, and shift arrow to the right one time. And get in those empty cells the sums, the total functions. The shortcut for that is ALT equal sign. It put formulas in there. You may have to widen all columns and rows, so I click on the ALL button and double click on any dividing line between B and C or between C and D to widen all the cells. Now let's go into how do we get summaries. I have here the data for 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012 and I would like to find the grand total. The totals for all the sales on Monday in January between 2009 and 2012. You realize any spreadsheet would do. You could do budgets per quarterly, part of the year, whatever you want to do, as long as they have the same structure. So we need the grand total for Monday in January. The function we need is probably the sum function, isn't it? So you could go to formulas and click on auto sum. But Excel is a little confused. It always looks for numbers to the left, couldn't find numbers to the left, then it looks for numbers above. If it can't find that, then it says, it's up to you. I don't know what you are trying to do. Don't worry about that formula. That's going to wait there for you very patiently. All you have to do is go to your first sheet, 2009, and click on the cell you want to sum. That is B2. Notice in the formula bar that it followed all your steps. Sum sheet B2009, exclamation mark, B2. And we want that also for 2010, 11, and 12. Don't click on all those individually. The shortcut trick is you hold the shift key and click on the last sheet, 2012, and it will include everything on the way. I'm doing that now. And notice what the formula bar did, 2009 colon 2012, exclamation mark B2. We are done. Control enter. Those were the totals for Monday in January. Double click that formula down in the right lower corner and copy it to the right at the bottom up to Friday. I would like to also see the subtotals. Remember we had a trick to do that, but we have to do that for 2009, 2010, 11, 12 and the totals. So let's do that all at once. We select the first guy, 2009, hold the shift key, totals. Whatever I do to this sheet that I am looking at right now, I will do to all the selected sheets. So do all your steps. Click on the first value, B2, Control shift arrow down, Control shift arrow to the right. One extra row, shift one down, shift one arrow to the right. Use your shortcut key. Yeah, you could click on auto sum, but alt equals. Widen all the columns by selecting all rows and all columns. Double click on any dividing line. And to get rid of all the highlighting, I click on cell A1. And what I did to one, I did to all of them. Don't change anything else on one of them, for you will do it to all of them. 
So in order to make them individual again, I have to unhook them from each other. Right click on any of those five that you have highlighted here and ungroup them. Now they are individual and notice that 2009 has totals 10, 11, 12 and the grand total sheet. They all did the perfect job. Now we are going to, uh, to add in column I the sales tax for all these figures. Let's say we have here sales including the sales tax and let's presume that the sales tax was 5%. So I have to divide all the values by 1.05 in order to get the real sales. So let's do that again for all the sheets. 2009 shift for 2012. The total sheet is a calculation based on the rest, so I don't have to do it for totals. What I do to one of them, 2009, 10, 11, or 12, I will do to all of them. I'm going to say to the machine, could you please remember the sales tax amount? Let's put that in cell I, 1.05. How do you say to a machine, remember, please? Copy it, Control C, and paste that into all the values as a division. Divide those values by 1.05. So I click on the first one, B2, Control shift arrow down, Control shift arrow to the right. That is one row too far for those, that last row is based on what is in the values above. So shift arrow up, shift arrow to the left. Paste that 1.05, you see the machine is still remembering that number, paste that in here as a division. Right click on any cell here, paste special. As a division, divide operation, but I don't want to use the format of that 1.05, I want to keep my currency, so I only use the value of what I am pasting. And at the moment you click on OK, you will see that all the values went down. Unhook all the sheets, ungroup, and the total sheet is now 2.0. 2 million. I, I want you to know that if you ever add 2013, you have to put them between 2009 and 2012. For the total sheet does everything from 2009 to 2012. So if you put it outside that range, it will not be included. Of course, you could change the formula here into 2000, up to 2013 and then copy it down and copy it to the right. That's fine too. But otherwise, you have to make sure that 2013 is inside that range. So let's use the, the first sheet, start as the 2013 sheet. If you want to change that name, start, double click on start and type 2013 and enter from now on. That is called 2013. It's not included in totals yet because it is not inside the range 2009 to 2011. So I click and hold on 2013 and move it somewhere inside that range. It doesn't matter where. And since its grand total is 4 million, my total should go up dramatically. In the total sheet, I see now that the grand total is 6 million something. I'm widening all my columns again. So that's what we got. Now I'm going to do an extra step. On my total sheet, I would like to see also what the values were for 2009 through 2013. So I, uh, I use the indirect function. Indirect looks for a text reference and it's going to look for the sheet name 2009 cell G14. Indirect is a great one if you want to use words, labels, text. I take the reference text 2009 as a sheet name. I hook onto it. The hook operator is space ampersand. 
and then the literal reference to the total cell. Remember after the sheet name you always need the exclamation mark and then cell G14 and close your string. That should find the grand total of 2009. If you want that in currency, that's what it looks like. And I'm going to copy that formula down to 2013. And we got all those values together. The grand total is of course the sum alt equal sign, 6 million something. Again, at the moment I move 2013 outside the range, then the total sheet will not show me 6 million anymore, but 2 million. This one will still work, because it just looks for the sheet name. You probably want to know much more, this is just the tip of the iceberg. So I developed for you a CD-ROM that discusses all the issues you would like to know about Excel. It has three modules, each module has more than 500 slides and it discusses the issues that you find here. Anything you could ever dream of. Where can you find that CD-ROM? MrExcel.com, Amazon.com, just type my name Gerard Verschuren and you will find all the books and CD-ROMs that I developed for you. I wish you good luck.